to the buffet to get it, go to one of the coffee serving situations down in the other parts of the ship and bring it back to the cabin, or book a junior suite or higher. Then you will have the luxury of being able to make yourself a coffee as soon as you wake up in the morning. It's a really nice thing to have to just have that smell of coffee wafting through the air as you're waking up to the views of the ocean beyond your balcony door. It is Sunday, October 15th, 2023, and on this week's edition of Sunday Sofa Time, we're talking about a junior suite. Whenever you're staying any place overnight, be it in a hotel or on a cruise ship, I think one of the most important factors in making the decision where you're gonna stay is what is this place that you're gonna be sleeping in? What is it gonna be like? How much space does it have? Does it have a view? Is there a coffee machine? Maybe a separate bedroom and living room? And for any of you who have been on a cruise, and I know many of you have, you will know that a standard cruise cabin is not anywhere as big as a standard hotel room, except maybe a hotel room in like London or New York. Those are small hotel rooms. But there are options if you are cruising to get a little bit more space, and we're gonna talk about one of them today, a junior suite on Royal Caribbean. I'm Morgan from the very unofficial travel guides. I travel all around the world to popular and not so popular tourist destinations to give you a very honest, unofficial look at what it's like to be there. I also wrote a book called Getting Stitches on a Cruise Ship, it's available on Amazon now. And in today's video, we are gonna go through and compare a junior suite to a normal balcony cabin, talk about what I think are some of the most important points of both and compare them to each other. And in the end, I'm gonna show you how much more you're gonna pay to get what you get for a junior suite. Let's start with the curb appeal or the first impression, the what you see and how you feel when you open the door for the first time. In a balcony cabin, it's there's really not much to be like really impressed by. There isn't a big wow factor. It looks like a standard balcony cabin on many cruise ships. And if you've never seen the inside of a balcony cabin on a cruise ship before, you'll probably think, okay, that looks kind of small, but this is basically what you get when you book a standard category of a cabin on a cruise ship and definitely on Royal Caribbean. Now, if we compare this to a junior suite, you will immediately be able to recognize that there is a lot more space. And I say a lot more space, but it's just compared to a standard cabin. It's not a lot more space compared to a standard hotel room on land. In fact, I think this junior suite, it carries the name suite, which I always think means a lot more space, but this is just basically as big as a hotel room. In a standard balcony cabin on Royal Caribbean that faces the ocean, this is pretty much what you're gonna get. It is a space big enough for two people to hang out on comfortably. There's two chairs, and these chairs have sort of a solid frame, and then the part that you sit on is a little bit softer. Compared to the furniture on other balconies and in other outdoor spaces, sometimes it's all just one kind of metal, and especially on Virgin Voyages, like I said that we saw last week, those give you waffle butt. These will not give you waffle butt. And surprisingly enough, in a junior suite, the balcony is also only a little bit bigger than in a standard balcony cabin. Definitely more space out here. You might even be able to get one like full-size lounge chair out here. But other than that, the furniture that's provided is the same furniture that is in or on the balcony in a normal balcony cabin. Moving on to sofas and seating possibilities. In the standard balcony cabin, there will be a long, very comfortable sofa either next to the window or in some cabins, it's the other way around that when you walk in, the sofa is the first thing and the bed is by the window and sometimes it's the bed is the first thing and the sofa is by the window. One person can sleep on this comfortably just laying down on it like it is and they also pull out to make a double bed. So if you have two kids or two other human beings that want to sleep there, that will be the possibility. And in a standard balcony cabin, the only other places to sit would be on the bed or there's one chair by the desk situation. 
in a junior suite, there's more. So not only do you have the same sofa that you'll see in the balcony cabins, but there's also a nice little, um, yeah, what would you call this, sort of lounger chair. I know there's a better name for this kind of chair. What is it? We had ours face towards the balcony so we could sit and relax and look outside. And then in the junior suite, there's also a chair by the desk. Now let's move on to cubbies and countertops. If you're gonna be on a cruise for longer than like four or five days, then you're gonna have a lot of stuff with you. And it's nice to sort of unpack things and make this into your home away from home for this week or 12 days or however long you're gonna be on the ship. And in that sense, it's nice to have enough space to put all your stuff. There are cruise cabins that don't provide that. Mentioning Virgin Voyages again. And in our standard balcony cabin, we had a countertop on top of this sort of dresser area, which is also where the mini fridge is inside. Then there was a small shelf above the desk and next to the bed, there were closet spaces on both sides. One side had more sort of cubbies and some drawers at the bottom, as well as the safe and a small hanging area. The other side was just hanging area. Marcus and I have cruised in this kind of cabin many times and we have plenty of space to put away all our things and usually stash our suitcases under the bed. Now on a junior suite, here is one of the places where you will see a huge difference and that is not only do you have all the same space to put stuff in the cabin, you have the countertop, you have the desk, you have that little shelf above the desk. There's also a small table next to that comfortable chair. And in addition to having one of these sort of stand up closet spaces like we saw in the standard balcony, there's also a full on walk-in closet with plenty of space to stash all your stuff. So that is a big plus over the standard balcony cabin. Your stuff is more out of the way and it's much easier to keep it organized and see where everything is just because this closet is so huge. And if you're doing a transatlantic or some kind of repositioning cruise for like 12 or 14 or 16 days, having this is gonna be really great for you. It's not something that I ever feel like I really need, but having it is a nice, Bonus. Now let's talk about the bed situation. The bed in a standard balcony cabin, I think this qualifies as a queen size or maybe it's a king, probably more like a queen size. And one thing that you'll notice when I show you the difference between this bed and the bed in the junior suite is the ends of this bed are a little bit rounded. So if it's a queen or a king, it's even a little bit smaller just because you're missing a little bit on the edges. I can't say that I think the beds on Royal Caribbean are especially comfortable or especially not comfortable. I'd say they're just pretty average, okay beds. Now, if we compare that to the junior suite, this bed is definitely a king size bed, if not bigger, and it doesn't have the rounded edges. And actually, I'm just noticing here, I thought this was a bigger bed, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's the same size, and from this angle, it also looks like the corners are rounded, so maybe I was wrong. In our most recent balcony cabin, there were only outlets and USB ports on one side of the bed. The other side of the bed did have a USB port, but it was like in the phone. And nowadays, I feel like every hotel room, every cruise ship cabin should have charging possibilities on both sides of the bed because I just feel like who doesn't need to have something charging next to the bed while they're sleeping. I need my fan. I know a lot of you out there have these CPAP uh, breathing machines, and if there's no power next to the bed, that's kind of a bummer. In our junior suite, there were charging stations on both sides of the bed, hidden sort of in the bases of these lamps, and that's just a nice bonus to have. And like I said, it's something I feel like should be standard nowadays. Is this a bigger bed? I'm not sure. Maybe it just seems bigger because there's more space on the sides. All right, we're gonna talk about some other perks and I'm gonna show you the bathrooms, which is also a big difference right after this commercial break. Did you get one? 
What was it about? Write it in the comments below, please. And by the way, please don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done it already. You know it's free, it doesn't cost you anything, but it's a huge support to the channel and it will give you an update about when the next videos from the very unofficial travel guides go online. And before the end of the year, you will see videos from the Margaritaville at Sea cruise experience, the independence of the seas, the celebrity equinox, and some fun other things I have planned. Bathroom doors are a, a topic for me. I like to have my privacy in the bathroom and I don't appreciate this new trend that you see in so many modernly designed hotels of having some kind of see-through situation where you can see from the room into the toilet area or into the shower area or into both. I don't get it. I don't like it. Who likes that? And I'm happy to report that both the balcony cabin and the junior suite have a Morgan approved bathroom door which closes all the way and is not see-through. The bathroom in the balcony cabin is pretty much a standard size for a balcony. I have seen sort of somewhat larger bathroom situations and also more cramped. This is a pretty optimal design with the glass cabin that's rounded in the corner. It makes it feel a little bit more open than if there's like a non-see-through uh, curtain there. And the counter space and the cubby space in the bathroom it has always been enough for Marcus and I on a week-long cruise in these kind of cabins. The bathroom in this junior suite and in I think just about any junior suite on any ship is always a little bit bigger. It's always a little bit upgraded. And in fact, when we stayed in a junior suite, or I think it's called a mini suite on NCL, I kind of felt like the bathroom was the only thing that was larger compared to a standard balcony cabin on NCL. And maybe I'll compare that coming up here soon too. Just another reason to subscribe. The junior suite has these little cubby areas on both sides of the mirror, which is definitely great to have, you know, his and hers, or his and his, or the boy's side and the girl's side, whatever. You have just two times the space. There is only one sink. And compared to the shower cabin in the balcony cabin, the junior suite has a actual bathtub. I've never taken a bath on a cruise, but I know that people who shave their legs, and also if you have small kids, a bathtub is a really nice thing to have, and it makes certain things easier. I do remember that the water pressure in the junior suite was really low. That was kind of an issue. I had to stand so close to the wall to get the water to come down on me because it just didn't spray out very far. That might have been just our suite, I don't know. There's one other thing that you get in a junior suite that you definitely will not have in your standard balcony cabin, and that is a very nice coffee machine. I know a lot of you out there are coffee junkies, and if you wanna have coffee in your cabin in the morning, you're either gonna have to order room service or go up to the buffet to get it, go to one of the coffee serving situations down in the other parts of the ship and bring it back to the cabin, or book a junior suite or higher. Then you will have the luxury of being able to make yourself a coffee as soon as you wake up in the morning. It's a really nice thing to have to just have that smell of coffee wafting through the air as you're waking up to the views of the ocean beyond your balcony door. Sounds nice, right? There are other cruise lines that offer a coffee machine in a standard balcony cabin, but Royal Caribbean is not one of them. And before we talk about the price difference, I also wanna remind you that when you're booking a suite, a junior suite, a huge aqua suite or whatever on a cruise ship, please remember that the extra money that you're paying is not just for the bigger space. Because as soon as you book a suite in any category, you're automatically getting some special perks that you won't be getting in a standard balcony cabin. You can see here in a junior suite, you're getting a bathrobe to use. You're getting the luxury bathroom amenities, which is also something I didn't talk about, but you get better soaps and shampoos. The coffee machine, oh, I'm interested to see here, it's surprising me that the pillow top mattress is not in a junior suite. That's starting at a grand suite. But you also get priority boarding, and let me tell you something. Priority boarding is really nice, especially if you're on one of the bigger ships. The boarding process can take a long time depending on what time you arrive and how many other people don't arrive at their scheduled boarding time. So having priority boarding is gonna get you on a lot quicker. 
very nice. You can see some of the other perks that are offered for the other suite category. So let's take a look at the price and just remember, you're not paying just for a little bit more space. You're also paying for all these things and more crown and anchor club points. Crown and Anchor is the frequent cruisers club on Royal Caribbean. I am currently one point away from moving up to the diamond level. Ooh, diamond level. And one really great thing about diamond level is I get some of these things that you would get only if you're staying in a suite, even if I'm staying in a standard cabin, and I get a certain amount of free drinks a day. So if you're looking for a way to quickly gain a lot of Crown and Anchor points, book a cruise in a junior suite or higher because that'll help you level up quicker. All right, I picked a random cruise leaving from Miami on the Oasis of the Seas, January 7th, 2024, a week long cruise. And you can see just a standard balcony cabin is gonna go for at least 1,178 per person, which actually is not that bad. But to compare it to a junior suite, and now you know exactly what it is you're gonna be getting, the least expensive junior suite, which is gonna be a guaranteed junior suite, meaning you can't choose your cabin in advance, that is going to cost you 2,980 per person, which is obviously a huge difference. In fact, I'm surprised that it's that much more because I don't feel like we paid that much more when we cruised in a junior suite, but maybe we did? I don't feel like I need a suite. It's definitely a nice thing to have, but I've had so many great experiences on cruises just staying in a standard cabin, staying in an ocean view cabin, or just staying in an inside cabin that I don't, I would much rather save my $1,800 more and just go on another cruise. How do you feel about this? Of course, once I'm diamond status, I'll also be eligible for more upgrades. I think I also get a better price on certain cruises, but when it's my money and I'm paying full price, I don't need a suite. Let me know what you think about all this in the comments below if this video helped you make a decision for your upcoming cruise. And speaking of comments, now comes the time on Sunday Sofa Time where I comment on your comments live on air. In last week's Sunday Sofa Time, we talked about how YouTubers earn money, how much money YouTubers earned. I showed how much money I've earned so far from my series about the Costa Smeralda cruise ship compared to how much I had to spend to make it happen. These comments are on that video. The first one is from Just M. They write, Thanks for sharing the earning info behind the scenes. If you factor in the fact that you have to film while on the trip, then spend hours sorting footage and editing, it would seem the business is not worth doing. But I think this kind of lifestyle business can be so much more rewarding than a nine to five job. Especially the benefits of time freedom and decision making control is priceless. Hope you are happy being a full-time YouTuber. Maybe you can make another video to share how you like it so far. This is such a great comment because I didn't talk about that at all in the last video. I just talked about how many views equals how much money. And if you watch the video, you'll know it's also always different. And I get so many comments of people saying that my job must be so great because I'm just on vacation all the time. And I'm so happy that there are people who understand that yes, I am traveling all the time. I'm visiting all these places that are great to go. I love to be there, but I don't usually experience it the same way as somebody who's on vacation. Vacation is the absence of your duties that you have at work, but this traveling is my work. So like Just M says here, I'm always filming and then I'm sorting the footage out and then I'm editing it together. So I love doing it. I'm so happy for this opportunity and I couldn't, you know, I wouldn't still be doing this if it wasn't for all of you. Thank you again. And compared to other jobs I've had where I've been in management roles or had responsibility for employees or quality things, of course, what I do now is so much less stressful and that makes me really happy. Next comment is from, I think it's Ken Yatakli. They write, honestly, while I do watch some of the bigger channels, whether they are travel related or not, I do like smaller channels like yours a little bit better, I think in part because they are more responsive to the viewer. 
I would compare it along the lines of a mom and pop shop versus a big box store or a big chain restaurant and a local dive. I will still go to the big chain restaurant, but I will try and find that local dive when I want something specific because I know they are gonna put more care into their product. Also, as a fellow Midwesterner who used to live in Germany, kept me coming back. Well, that's such a great way to put it. Thank you so much for that analogy. I talked about last week how even though other channels like friends of mine like Emma and Tony, they've come after me and their channels have become much bigger than mine, that I feel like I'm sort of, yeah, like Ken says, uh, I'm the local dive. I'm the small boutique channel. And I do try to interact. I do try to read all the comments and answer questions that need answering. And I think some of the bigger channels just get so many comments that they would never be able to read them all. Thanks, Ken. Final comment is an interesting one from Roy Ferguson. Roy writes, I suppose you do not pay tax on your earnings. And actually, there were three or four other people who were saying that they thought that I don't pay taxes and I definitely pay taxes. Everybody has to pay taxes. The money that I make from Google AdSense, from the sales of my book, getting stitches on a cruise ship, as well as the money that I get from all the very generous people who are members at patreon.com slash very unofficial, that all counts as income and I do pay taxes on it. If anybody out there is running your own business, and you're not paying taxes, you better start. That's gonna catch up with you. Even if you're not working for another company, even if you are your own company, you still have to pay taxes. All right, everybody, thank you for spending this part of your Sunday or whatever day it is that you watch this with me here in front of the red sofa. Next Sunday, we will be disembarking the Margaritaville at sea cruise ship and embarking on the Celebrity Equinox. If you wanna find out if I upload a Sunday Sofa Time in advance, or maybe go live on the channel from the Equinox, make sure you're subscribed. See you then.